This is CCI, Mini Mag Vart, 37 grain jacketed hollow point, 22 long rifle, versus Hornaday, VMAX, 17 grain, 17 HMR, a ballistics gel comparison video, part one. In this video, we have our 10% FBI grade ballistics gel from Clear Ballistics that a friend of the channel sent us, set up at 50 yards. We are going to shoot it first with the CCI mini mag ammunition and see how that goes. After that, we are then going to shoot it with the Hornaday 17 grain VMAX ammunition. And now, let's hit the range. That sounds like it hits me. Yeah, almost dead center. Maybe go to the left end to the right of it. For your next year. Do you want my sweater to put your rusty rifle on? No, it's okay. That sounded like it hit hard. I saw that hit the gel. It was a little left of the center, I think. In my not an expert opinion here, looking at our gel. I think we see in the 2 to 4 inch range of the block where the hollow point round expanded and then out to about the 7 to 9 inch range in the block we see where that hollow point round then continue to traverse through the block. We didn't see quite as much penetration and I think that's due to that hollow point expansion and then the associated drag that caused through the gel slowing it down. Looking at a close-up of the rounds captured in our gel media, I'm going to say we see very good and very consistent hollow point expansion across all the rounds that we fired here today. And now let's move on to our test with the Hornaday 17 HMR 17 grain VMAX ammunition. trouble getting comfortable. It didn't sound like it hit quite as hard as the 22. I wonder if that means it just penetrated with more intensity. Ooh, that one sounded like it hurt. It almost even looked like it powdered something on hitting the gel. Or maybe that was gel getting blasted out the wound channel. We're going to have to slow that down. Same spot. Ooh, that was Ooh, that Ooh, same spot. A close-up of our ballistics gel here tells a very in interesting story, I think, for this 17 HMR 17 grain VMAX ammunition. We see penetration out to about 5 and 3 quarter inches with extreme fragmentation. Really there are not any pieces in there very much bigger than maybe 2 millimeters uh, square. Taking a close-up look at the first part of the impact area, 
we see approximately an inch into the gel for all three rounds. The rounds exploded. There's maximum fragmentation there. There's very tiny pieces, less than a millimeter square, all over the place at an inch to four inches into this gel. Looking at the four to six inch range in the block, we see that the largest of the pieces that remained did travel about four to five and three quarter inches into the gel. And those pieces, again, they're not very large, just the largest that was left. Now taking a close up look at the initial impact area, we see on impact there was a scorch mark from where the bullet hit the gel. And then the fragmentation created what I'm gonna call an inverted Christmas tree pattern in our gel here. This inverted Christmas tree pattern, I think is the reason why we see the large puffs of atomized gel shooting out the wound channels or the impact points on the block in the video. And again, the largest of the fragments traveled further and created what we're gonna say are the trunks of these inverted Christmas tree patterns in our gel today. Before we get to the conclusion of our video, let's quickly do one last gel test here today with the 17HMR rifle. For this last test, we're gonna do three shots with the CCI 17HMR 20 grain full metal jacket ammunition. Let's see how that does against our 18 pound block. All right, here we go. For the conclusion to the video today, let's bring in the numbers from our Labradar Doppler chronograph that you saw obscuring the uh, shooter in the point of view cam here today. For the CCI Minimag Varmint with its 36 grain copper plated hollow point projectile, for the shots we fired today we had an average velocity of 1,235 feet per second. The energy foot-pounds on that comes out to, on average, 121.89 foot-pounds of energy. Now, the advertised velocity on the box is 1,260 feet per second. I think you can say that that's within one round of the next of what we achieved today. So I think our velocity is close enough to where we can say our accurate or velocity pretty accurately represented the velocity quoted on the box, or vice versa. Now the video here today is one where we would we did not do a caliber for caliber comparison and that was intentional. The intent of this video was to see how the 17 HMR ammo did in comparison to say a common 22 long rifle hunting ammunition. And the 17 HMR VMAX by Hornaday, that's a common 17 HMR ammunition that I find in stores around me. And the 17 HMR would be seen as a common small game hunting round, very similar to what, say, the 22 long rifle would be used for. Though, in my opinion, you can shoot it out to a much farther range by virtue of the added velocity. Now, speaking of the velocity, for the VMAX ammunition that we fired today, our average velocity came out to 2,568 feet per second. On average, that comes out to 248.88 foot-pounds of energy. That's almost, well, that's more than double the foot-pounds of energy of what we achieved with the 22 long rifle ammunition today. And the ammunition that we're firing here from the 17 HMR is 17 grain ammunition, 
compared to 36 grain ammunition. So it's almost 20 grains lighter, more than twice as fast, more than twice the energy. That velocity, E equals mc squared, c instead of speed of light, if you convert it to fast, force equals mass times velocity squared. Well, the more velocity by squaring it, you can overcome a difference in mass by adding such a significant increase in velocity like we did here today, itchy face. Now we did not see the same penetration with our Hornaday VMAX ammunition that we did out of the CCI Mini Mag, and I think 100% of that has to do with the fragmentation and how small of pieces were left over. At 17 grains of mass in the projectile, there's not much mass left over in each piece to really have enough momentum, in my opinion, to go as far in the block as we saw as what the 37 grain projectile did in comparison. Now on the flip side, I think we do see a lot of damage in the gel in the first three to five inches of the block. Now what I'm not sure of is whether that would be immediately lethal or would cause a secondary infection that would be lethal. Now I have reached out to a friend of the channel who is a retired mobile rural traveling veterinarian who serviced these farms and small towns around middle America. So I am going to try to get an expert opinion on that regard on what they think as well. That's probably the closest expert I'm going to find on this topic. Now let's talk about the third ammunition that we just tossed in as a sort of a toss in today. And that was the CCI 37 grain or excuse me, CCI 20 grain full metal jacket 17 HMR ammunition. And while we did not chronograph that ammunition, it was just one of those, hey, I have a magazine of that left, why don't you go ahead and shoot that before we pack up. We did see on the gel that none of those rounds were captured. One of them, I think it zigged off up through the gel in the first few inches. The second one, it traveled the entire body of the gel and we saw very violent Jigger, that's our pseudoscientific term we have created for these ballistic gel tests in the gel, but the bullet went completely through the gel. It looked like we had no chance of capturing it. And the third round that was hit by, that we hit on the gel, it went about two thirds of the way through the gel before it veered off into the void and again, not captured. If we had set up, say, the high tech fleece bullet stopper behind the gel, I think we would have probably captured the second one though I'm not sure. We're going to have to test that in the future. But as we saw with a full metal jacket projectile, it cut through our 18 pounds of ballistics gel like a hot knife, a molten hot knife through butter. There was basically no resistance in my opinion. And I mean, I don't know, that was scary nonetheless. I don't know. That was very scary in my opinion. So anyway, I hope you're looking forward to part two of this video where I can hopefully consult with an expert on what they think the 17 HMR would have done. And until then, thanks for watching. Have a good day.